I want to speak to you today about three things. My family, my faith and my future. There's a verse in the Bible that brings these three things together. In 2 Timothy 3, the Apostle Paul is writing to his younger colleague, Timothy. And in verse 15, Paul says this. From a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Paul is referring to Timothy's childhood. And in the first chapter of the very same book, 2 Timothy, Paul speaks about Timothy's grandmother and Timothy's mother, both of whom were Christians. That would tell us that Timothy had the very best of upbringings, a home in which the word of God was treasured, a home in which the Son of God was trusted. That was also true of me. I was born into a home where my parents were Christians, but like Timothy, I can trace my Christian heritage back more than just one generation. In fact, I can go further back than he could go. Parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, even great-great-grandparents. This hymn book belonged to my great-grandmother. My great-great-grandfather, his name was William Brown, but he was nicknamed Paul because he was such an earnest preacher. It was back in 1914 that some relatives of mine were involved in the formation of a company of Christians in Windigates. For many years they met in the Institute in Milton Road before moving to the Arnott Gospel Hall in Kenway in 1977. Here's a, a, a Bible given as a Sunday School prize to my mum. It says, Ellen S. Leggett, first prize by the Christian Brethren Windigates, December 1945. This Bible was my father's. As a young man, he felt called by God to leave his job as an accountant in Dunfermline and go to the Republic of Ireland as a missionary. But between handing in his notice and the date his employment was due to come to an end, between those two dates, he had been called home to heaven. He was just 30. In the Bible, in Psalm 16, David declares, The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places, yea, I have a goodly heritage. And that is so true of me. Relatives going back the generations, and relatives not only in the Kenaway and Windigates area, but throughout Fife, and indeed all over the world, as far away as America, and Australia, and New Zealand, who are Christians, my family. But you know, being raised in a Christian home, while a great privilege, does not make anyone a Christian. Individually, personally, we need to trust in the Lord Jesus. It's evident that from his earliest of years, Timothy had known the message of the Bible, but there had to come a time when he acknowledged the truth of the message, a time when he accepted the Saviour for himself, the Saviour, the one who is at the very centre of the message of the Bible. In the verse that we read, Paul speaks about faith, faith in Christ Jesus. It's in Acts chapter 16 that we encounter Timothy for the first time, and he's already a disciple, a follower of the Lord Jesus. As far back as I can remember, I knew stories from the Bible. I can remember as a very, very small boy, acting out the story of Moses at the Red Sea, the story of Samuel hearing the call of God, the story of David and Goliath, I remember attending Dunny Keir Evangelistic Hall in Kirkcaldy and for some reason I remember from those days the hymn that begins Life at Best is Very Brief. I remember singing in the hall those 
lines of the chorus. Be in time, be in time, while the voice of Jesus calls you be in time. If in sin you longer wait, you may find no open gate and your cry be just too late. Be in time. When I was just a little boy, I had this children's Bible. I distinctly remember that there was a picture in this Bible that upset me. It was this picture, a picture of the Lord Jesus on the cross. I used to get upset at the thought of what wicked men did to the lovely Lord Jesus. I wasn't the first to get upset. There was a, a godly minister from Dundee called Robert Murray McShane. He died in 1843 at the young age of 29, but his influence continued to have an impact long after he died and even until today. We still sing hymns that he wrote and in one of his hymns there's this verse, like tears from the daughters of Zion that roll, I wept when the waters went over his soul, yet thought not that my sin had nailed to the tree, Jehovah said can you, was nothing to me. That man, Robert Murray McShane, later came to understand the reason for the death of the Lord Jesus, and I came to understand that too. I came to understand that Jesus died because of wicked men, but more than that, and this is the wonder of the gospel, Jesus died for wicked men, for wicked men, for wicked women, for wicked young people, for wicked boys, for wicked girls. And I distinctly remember a night in our house in Dollar, Clackman and Shire, when I asked my mum how I could become a Christian. She explained to me that I needed to believe that when the Lord Jesus died on the cross, he was dying for me, he was dying for my sins. And I said that night to my mum, and I was really saying to God that I accepted that, I believed that. I can actually tell you what date that was. It was on the 11th of January, Thursday the 11th of January 1973. I know that because my mum wrote my name beside that date in this wall calendar. Just a very simple confession of faith by a very young boy. And maybe people would dismiss it. But I want to tell you that God in heaven heard that very simple confession of faith in his son. And I have the assurance that my name was not only written by my mum in this wall calendar, but my name is in God's register of believers in heaven. In the last video, Gordon quoted a verse from Acts chapter 16, a question that a man asked, a question that every man, every woman, every individual should ask, what must I do to be saved? And the answer that man in Acts 16 received was this, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believe what, you might say? Well, we need to believe in his worth and we need to believe in his work. We need to believe that he was, he is, who he claimed to be, the very son of God. And we need to believe that when he died on the cross, he died for our sins. He took my place. He faced my penalty. He paid my price. Let me ask you this question. If tonight your life were to come to an end, and you were to find yourself standing at the door, at the gate, the entrance into heaven. And if God were to say to you, why should I let you into my heaven? What would you say? What would your answer be? You know, I fear that so many would try to answer something like this. I, I've lived a good life. I've tried to do my best. I've never done anyone any harm. But common though those answers might be, they are not correct. They could not, in fact, be more wrong as a basis of entrance into heaven. And if that's how you would answer, I've tried to live a good life. 
done my best, never done anyone any harm. I have to tell you that heaven's door would remain forever close to you. But this is how I would answer that question. The Son of God loved me and gave himself for me. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Here's how I would answer. In peace let me resign my breath and thy salvation see. My sins deserve eternal death but Jesus died for me. Here's how I would answer. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to the cross I cling. Upon a life I did not live, upon a death I did not die, another's life, another's death, I stake my whole eternity. And that brings me to my third point, my future. In the verse we read, Paul speaks about salvation. Salvation through faith. And salvation not only has a, a past and a, a present aspect, it has a future aspect as well. A Christian is saved from the penalty of sin. Their sins are forgiven, for they were dealt with by the Lord Jesus in his death on the cross. A Christian is saved from the power of sin. Lives are changed because the mastery of sin is broken. The Lord Jesus is now in control. And so that's the past, that's the present aspects of salvation. But there's a future aspect. And a Christian has the assurance of being saved from the very presence of sin. I've read from 2 Timothy 3, and in the very next chapter, Paul contemplates his impending death. It would be a martyrdom. He would be put to death because of his faith in the Lord Jesus. But death held for him, no fear. He speaks about his departure in the knowledge that there would be for him an arrival in heaven. I've spoken about some of my relatives and I can recall with sadness days when some of their lives came to an end. I, I do think I can remember the night that my dad died. I was only three. I certainly remember the nights that my two grandmothers died and more recently I remember the night my mum died and as I speak to you there's a dear relative of mine in Edinburgh he's very unwell and it looks as though his life will soon be over but you know Christians never say goodbye they only say good night I'll see you in the morning and so I have the confidence of seeing those I loved who, like me, love the Lord Jesus, I'll meet them again in heaven. The hymn writer puts it like this, Now I've a hope that will surely endure. After the passing of time, I have a future in heaven for sure. There in those mansions sublime, and it's because of that wonderful day when at the cross I believed, riches eternal, and blessing supernal from his precious hand I received. And so this is my testimony, the story of my conversion, how I became a Christian. My family, my faith, my future. A few years ago I, I wrote this little booklet, Why I Am a Christian, and if you would like a, a free copy, just get in touch. My desire in writing this booklet and our desire in producing these videos is that others might come to trust the Lord Jesus. Maybe some of you came to meetings in the Institute at Windigates all those years ago. Maybe others have been to the Sunday School or to children's meetings or to gospel meetings at the Arnott Gospel Hall in Kennewe. Great if that has been the case, but vital for you to come to Christ. Can I quote by, can I close by quoting a lovely verse from the Bible? The Lord Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28, Come unto me, 
all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to Christ, and then you, like me, will have a story to share.